Welcome back to Lunch Break here at WSJ Live. I'm Simon Constable. Vogue Editor-in-Chief Anna Winter writes this of June cover model Kate Upton in her editor's note, quote, if high fashion world seems incapable of figuring out what to do with her, then that's its loss. Miss Winters would signal a major shift in the fashion industry that's been taking place behind the scenes, plus size equals big profits. Here to explain, Wall Street Journal's on-style columnist Christina Binkley. Thank you for being there, Christina. Uh, Christina, Anna Winter's note shows she's made a, a calculated choice to f feature Upton. What's she really saying about high fashion being ready to go bigger? You know, this is, the, the, this is like a, a, a time bomb for fashion. Americans are getting so much bigger. We see flesh all over the place. The one place we very rarely see it is in fashion magazines or in designer department stores. So Kate Upton is not exactly plus size. Well, let's be, be frank here, but she is far fleshier than most of the fashion models we've been seeing lately. And she's been terribly dissed by, by the high fashion brands up until now. We'll see whether that changes. Anna Wintour has, has thrown down the gauntlet. So wh why, wh I mean, you, you sort of touched on this, but why is the plus size market has so much demand, but so little supply? You would think in a free market, that people will be out there with sewing machines saying, hey, let's let's do something. There's a there's a gap there. You would think. I, I think that Steve Jobs would have identified that quite a few years ago. If fashion was his industry, we'd have a lot more plus sizes out there. You know, more than half the, the population in the U.S. wears a, what is the equivalent of a plus size. Size uh, 14 to 16 is the average size in the U.S. But fashion brands don't want to associate themselves with fat. So if you look at imagery, which is what sells fashion, it's always thin and beautiful. The truth is it's a very complicated thing to make small sizes and large sizes. A lot of brands also shy away from making petites for the same reason. It's expensive and it's difficult. But that's really changing. I mean, the young fashion lovers have been demanding at an almost revolutionary pace. They have been screaming, we want fashions, we want short shorts mm -hmm. and mini skirts and all the trendy looks. And some companies are starting to find that they really fly off the shelves if they'll stock them. So what's different about plus size customers now? And, and you know, it, I mean, is there something that in the past, maybe they're just saying, okay, well, they can't get anything, therefore I won't even bother. Yeah, there used to be actually, you're right, there used to be a lot quieter about it. I think that uh, social media has a, a lot to do with this. Young people, and this is really a trend that's being driven by young women, young people get out there and holler on social media, so they get heard more often. We also have a good solid decade worth of, sort of information out there training young women to be proud of their bodies, to not be embarrassed about their curves. Um, there have been a lot of curvy fashion lines that have come out, particularly denim lines um, like Cookie by Cookie Johnson, um, that have done exceedingly well in the fashion industry. So there's starting to be a track record of success in catering to these curvy women. And, uh, you know, with the, the sort of screaming and yelling for the clothing at the same time, there's some initial success. I think we're on the edge of seeing a real change and increase in the plus sizes. Wow, real change. We're on the edge of it. Great stuff. Christina Binkley, thank you very much for your time. Lee.